uh, Bob Ciccone. Ciccone doesn't seem to be as fast now as he was at the very start of the race for some reason. Maybe the tires have cooled off a little bit. Casolino up to second position, and that is the car that he actually purchased from John Bickford. That's the car that was driven so successful. Oh, he's in the fence. He actually got the back of Ciccone's car. There was contact there. They got hooked up, and Ciccone takes a, well, a harmless slide to the infield, but outside contact for Peter Casolino. We talk, there's a shot of the back. You can see where the damage was done when Cosleo got in the back of Bob Ciccone. We talk about uh, that car having been driven successfully by Jeff Gordon. Well, that's the danger for young guys coming to a racetrack like this. They do not realize how fast and how quickly things can happen. Look at Peter Cosolino. He's sitting in the middle of the front straightaway. He hit the fence in the middle of the back straightaway. That's how far momentum took him because it, it lost all the brakes, of course, when he hit the fence. And that's how far the momentum took him around this racetrack once he lost the brakes and kept going, sliding. That car was pushing around the track because it's not rolling because the front uh, wheels are all askew. Yeah, so there was a lot of friction there, and it still made it from the middle of the back straightaway to the middle. Now watch again. Here's the contact off the corner. Larry? Inexperience on Cosolino's part. He had no business being there when, uh, when right when he uh, moved up, when Ciccone moved up, he hit Cosolino, but Cosolino had no business being there. So once again, some damage to the rear of Ciccone's car. He may be able to get a push start and resume action for the back of the pack, but obviously that car is heavily damaged there through the uh, right front suspension. Maybe the last we see of Peter Cosolino this afternoon. Once again, a different camera angle. Peter Cosolino is trying very hard. He's going to move up on the outside. This is inexperienced. He's up there. He's going to stick his nose. Look, he's clear off the left front tire. He just drilled him. He just drilled Ciccone right in the back end. Ciccone did not move up on him. He drilled him, lifted the whole left side of his car up, and spun Ciccone out. He just did not judge properly how far up he was on Ciccone. And when he got on the throttle, he just drilled Ciccone, put Ciccone sideways, and put himself into the fence. Well, Ciccone is running again as he drives down the front straightaway. Dave, you are with uh, Peter Casolino. Yeah, the, the lessons of Winchester are oftentimes uh, hard ones to learn, Peter Casolino. You got yourself in a bad spot over there. What happened? Well, I, uh, I got a little too close to him. I basically ran to the back of him, but... Uh... I want to get interviewed, but I don't think this is the way I want to do it. <laughs> no way to get yourself on television. What did you learn? You've only had about 20 seconds to think about it, but what did you learn? What won't you do the next time you come here? Don't stick your nose under someone's tail that far. <laughs> Glad to see you're okay. Peter Casolino learns an expensive lesson here this afternoon. Bob Ciccone is fired, but Peter Casolino appears done for the day. We'll be back with more of the action at Winchester. The restart of our fourth and final heat coming up when we come back.